and we're back with another installment of my Rat Rig V-Core 3.1 build adventure. Last time we finished the entire mechanical and structural assembly of the printer, but I didn't go into any of the wiring in the enclosure and certainly not any of the mods or prints that I've done. I was planning to make this my last video on the build itself, but I decided I need to split my videos up into smaller chunks. So this video is gonna focus on just the wiring and the first couple prints. Then I'll do a couple more short videos to show off the rest of the process, including some of the mods and some of the cool things I printed on the new machine. So let's talk about wiring. I'm mostly gonna let my past self explain things within the clips, but I do have one important piece of context. Everything up to this point was really well documented in the Rat Rig build guide, which I showed in my part one video. But once you get to the wiring, the docs suddenly get really sparse. You basically get a single wiring diagram, which isn't even 100% complete, and that's it. I'm pretty sure this is intentional. The process requires handling 120 or 240 volts main power coming from your wall outlet, and that can be really dangerous. Rat Rig doesn't wanna be responsible for you getting injured or killed because of a deficiency in their instructions. So by omitting the information, they're basically implying you need to know enough about wiring to fill in the gaps yourself safely. And that goes for everyone watching this video. Don't do this unless you know what you're doing. The saying, I know enough to be dangerous has a rather dark interpretation here. You need to know enough to be safe and don't forget to ground everything. And with that, let's go back to past Alan talking his way through all this mess. I'm going to use the Voron strategy. Uh, using DIN rails. Usually you buy electronics that have clips that clip onto them. Voron has a really cool 3D printed design. These are the Voron clips. They have this little spring in them. It's constrained by little wings inside the frame on the top and the bottom. So it can only move a little bit, which is all you need. And it's on. And so these two holes are 55 millimeters, which is gonna be, this thing is gonna be for power distribution. It's something I found on Voron, but I modified it for my own liking ground, neutral, load, and these are little WAGO connectors, so I'm gonna use these for effectively power distribution. Little holes so I can mount the clip on the back and I can mount this on a DIN rail, and then these will be, I'll use some VHB mounting tape to keep these guys in here. One of the awesome guys who makes lots of designs for uh, V-Core 3 had this on printables. It's got mounting holes for the BTT Octopus, so this is the motherboard of the printer, and then it's also got mounting holes for the Raspberry Pi, so it goes right there. It has space for two DIN clips, and it has fan covers, so 220 millimeter fans, and they will mount there, there'll be two of them, and that'll keep both the, the motherboard and the Raspberry Pi cool. These, these things are awesome. They are zip tie mounts for 3030 aluminum. Twist it into place, attach your wires to it. I'm gonna be running wires along the extrusion right here, and it's a good way to keep them tidy. So this motor right here is gonna have a wire that has to be run along the inside here and somehow get up to the wiring. Same thing with the motor over there. The motor right here is a bit closer, but it still has to be wired. Also, we have end stops that need to be wired. So here's the, well, here's the Y axis. It hits that and then it knows it's at the minimum Y value. There is a similar one right here. There, that's max X. So, so I just gotta get the wire for this Y end stop to the motherboard and the motors. So the power supply takes in mains voltage, which here in the US is 110, 120 volts uh, AC, neutral, live, and ground. I've already wired those three to here, so this is gonna be power distribution. Uh, normally I could have wired it directly to the power supply, but um, I actually have two consumers of it. The power supply, which is gonna convert to 24 volts for basically everything, except for the heated bed, and the heated bed uh, is wired from mains directly consuming 120 volts AC. My daughter made this for me for Father's Day a couple years ago. It's adorable, I love it. It's been on my desk forever. Uh, but right now I need somewhere to put my wiring diagram. Don't worry, it's just temporary. All right, so I'm looking at the wiring diagram online. This is a BTT Octopus Pro. The one online is just BTT Octopus. 
and it shows that there's an extra row of pins on the wiring diagrams. Everything else looks close enough that I didn't notice this disparity before. This is when I discovered that all six motor cables had the wrong connectors. Each of the six cables has four wires that need to be arranged and crimped into new connectors. This took what felt like a lifetime and I was just mumbling the whole time, but the good news is that now I'm a certified JST XH wire crimping ninja. One thing I should mention is that a couple of these pins can be used to power the Raspberry Pi and run it off the 24 volt power supply if you have a buck converter. The downside of that, there's a switch here that controls basically all the power into this box. And if I flip that switch because I wanna turn off the printer, it's gonna shut down the Pi too. And it's not gonna shut down cleanly. You can run the risk of corruption. I would prefer it to be running and not reboot every time I do something with a printer. So what I'm gonna do is simply have a three amp USB cable and a plug, so I'll just have a separate plug for it. I was stupid and I bought 12 volt fans and this, this whole system is 24 volts. So that was dumb. I ended up getting a little buck converter which can convert 24 volts down to 12 volts. Design and 3D printed a little bracket for it with some zip ties, so the fans will go into that. Wiring's in pretty good shape. Everything's kind of messy, but you know what? It's not so bad for a first draft. What I'm gonna do is make sure everything works, is in good shape, and then I can work on tidying this up. So far, I haven't powered on anything. I guess I could plug it in and see what happens. Are there gonna be any explosions? Okay, plug it in. All right, here we go. Blast off in three, two, one. I see lights on the motherboard. Flashing, I see lights down here. So far, nothing smoking. Exciting. All right, so I was having trouble. I could not get the, the Raspberry Pi to acknowledge that this board even exists. I've definitely flashed the board with the 446 firmware. It took it. So the recommendation from the Discord was to disconnect everything, like literally everything. I even took out the motor drivers. Then try to power it on, use the USB cable and see if the Raspberry Pi sees it. So I've got a computer here with SSH session into the Raspberry Pi showing the listed USB devices. Yes, it sees it. This is the first time I've seen it say that there is a USB device. So the fact that it does means that the board is probably fine and I probably had some wax stuff hooked up to it. Yes! Now Z is a whole nother story. What does it say to do about Z? Bed moves down when Z is increased. Okay, let's go up 50. This is definitely not the quietest of machines. Please, 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 please. Yes! So I just turned on the part cooling fan and, wow, yeah, I can feel some good air coming out of there. That is definitely gonna cool some parts. Do a first print, I want everything cooled. So if you'll recall, there's six stepper motor drivers right here behind this fan. And those, when you look at the, the heat map of what's going on on this whole back plate, those things are at 60 Celsius, like 140 Fahrenheit, almost too hot to touch, even without anything going on in the printer. Like the printer's just idle and we definitely, want cooling here. Oh, 
<laughs> Terrible noise. So it's capturing the mesh, the bed mesh. Oh no, is it doing a full 7x7? Seven seven? That's gonna take so long. That's why. Ha! <laughs> That's the one thing I didn't test was the extruder direction. How do I cancel? It's working. Oh wow, that looks really nice. It's finished. It's almost embarrassing that I printed such a tiny object on such a huge build plate, but wow. I have done no tuning and no calibration whatsoever, and that print quality looks awesome. Awesome first layer. Yeah, there's a little room for improvement here, but there's not much to complain about considering that this is the very first print. Wow. Good looking guy. Let's see how my new hairdo looks. Oh yeah. We're far from done, but it's been a smashing success so far. I successfully built a machine from scratch that melts plastic onto a hot build plate and the results actually look good. I really couldn't be happier with this result. In the next installments, I'll talk about the software, the calibration, the stupid enclosure you see here, and some mods I added to the printer to improve my quality of life. Oh yeah, and... Don't you worry, kid. I didn't forget.